This is Trinidad and Tobago, a twin island republic located at the southern end of the Caribbean. Like many other territories in the hemisphere, the citizens here are anxious to see their country advance to first world status, compelling policymakers towards industrialization in the hopes that it brings development. Every day, new industries and businesses are established, products manufactured and buildings constructed. Everywhere you look, you can see the signs of industrialization and development. But there is only one problem. This land was once a mangrove swamp. These mountains were once covered with trees. Waters and lands that were once pristine are now polluted. This transformation has put the business community and environmentalists at odds with each other. The environmentalists arguing that industrialization in its current form does more harm than good, while the business community counter that this is the only way to alleviate poverty amongst nationals and propel the country into the 21st century. What we, um, what we attempt to do um, in F. Fisherman and Friends of the Sea is we attempt to promote the wise and careful use of our natural resources so that by their exploitation, alternate users are not compromised. The way we do it is by community education, by parliament watch, by community mobilization, by a system of reporting, whether it is fish kills, um, dangerous or negligent behavior or dumping of chemicals. We try to protect the local people first and, and also the ecosystems and environments which make the people rich because, I mean, let's face it, if you have a billion dollars but you don't have fresh air, how wealthy really are you? If you have a, a, a trillion dollars and everybody has cancer, what is the money worth? So there's a sense of value in, in terms of how we attempt to, co to, to protect communities. This whole concept that was introduced by the International Forum, that there will be something called voluntary compliance, that is an illusion. That is an illusion. There is no such thing as voluntary compliance. This is a hard, doggy dog world. There is absolutely nothing um, that local corporate bodies are doing, have done, or have ever done, other than fool the public that they are doing something so they can green their, their, their image. So forget about that. Forget about that concept. That concept is, uh, is corrupted by, by, the, by the essence of human nature. What neither side foresaw, however, was the emergence of a movement of young entrepreneurs whose businesses actually help the environment like Nicole Mohammed, founder of EcoThink Consultancy, which specializes in helping other companies go green. I've always had a passion for environmental law and environmental issues, and um, so I did my master's in environmental law a couple of years ago. And after that, I worked for a number of international NGOs, and I started EcoThink with the intention of it being operated like a social enterprise. So the idea is to use the company as a way of doing projects that, that create social good and um, raise awareness about environmental issues in Trinidad and Tobago. Only a few months old, EcoThink has already begun to make a difference here in Trinidad and Tobago. Earlier this year, they embarked on the Green the Scene campaign to introduce recycling into the country's annual carnival celebrations. I was trying to use carnival as a platform to sort of bring awareness to the need for us to think about how we manage waste better. And I was really impressed with the way the public responded. I mean, I thought that they wouldn't collect anything because I knew it was carnival parties and people don't really care much about anything during these events. And we did. We actually collected close to a ton of garbage at the end of the carnival season. And I was really happy with that result. The Caribbean is synonymous with an abundance of sunshine. A resource Richard Sabga proves can be harnessed as an alternative form of energy with his solar-powered lunar lights. This is uh, the Lunar Road Light, LR40 series. Uh, how do the Lunar Road Lights work? It's very simple. Uh, each Lunar Road Light has a solar panel. It's a solar cell that in the daytime absorbs photons, which are units of light, ambient light. does not necessarily need direct sunlight. That sunlight is then converted through the solar panel and then stored as energy in a battery in which you offer different battery types. Each lunar road light has within it a light sensor, which means that when the environment becomes dark, the light sensors activate the light emitting diodes, which you may see as I cover the solar panel. And as I remove my hand, they come on. Within the daytime, it may be difficult, but you could probably get a visual here. So this would be representative of daytime. And as the sun sets and the environment becomes dark, 
the lunar road lights activate. These lights, installed for almost a year, have made a tremendous difference on the roadways where they are located. Solar energy right now, it's a new technology. Uh, more research and development needs to go into the actual production of the technology. However, it has made significant strides currently. And uh, basically, one of the major issues would be scalability of the solar power, applying it on a wide scale. However, with the lunar road lights, it fits the application perfectly as we've been applying the technology all over the world. Richard is not the only entrepreneur concerned with the situation on the roadway. Jason Gooding, having noticed daily gridlock traffic and the subsequent increase in levels of carbon monoxide, established his bicycle courier service to transport packages in and around the capital. We don't have the problems of traffic. Um, you know, we, we can get from St. James to Port of Spain in, in under 10 minutes. Um, we don't have problems with parking and we don't have the problems with pollution. I think it's uh, one of the most efficient ways of getting documents and parcels around Port of Spain, uh, currently in Trinidad and Tobago. Studies have shown that organic farming is more beneficial than typical commercial agriculture, with its produce higher in nutrients, requiring less water, and no artificial fertilization, which harms the soil and water supplies, and may even have the potential to reverse some aspects of climate change. New Earth Enterprises is a strong proponent of organic farming and is a source for organic food.